Good afternoon and welcome to our daily COVID-19 update for the town of Plymouth. This is update number 20. It's coming to you live on Wednesday, April 8th, 2020. I'm Steve Trifletti, your town moderator, and we'll be here each day, Monday through Friday at noon for this update. This forum is being brought to you live by PAC-TV on Comcast channels 13 and 15 and Verizon channels 43 and 47. You can also watch this on pac TV streaming channel by going to pactv.org slash live. For questions during today's forum, please email us at plymouthinfo at pactv.org. These forums can be replayed at pactv.org slash Plymouth. And each day, Selectman Chair Kenneth Tavares and Plymouth Representative Matthew Muratori and I are all joined by a panel of participants. We welcome back once again Heather Cosby, who is a Plymouth CPA, Lawrence Pizer, the Plymouth Town Clerk, Michael Jaffman, who is staff member at Congressman Keating's office, and Amy Naples, the Executive Director for the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. And as we begin each day, we look forward to our opening statement from the Chair of the Board of Selectmen, Kenneth Tavares. Welcome, Ken. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to address the residents of Plymouth at this time. The message from our governor, our town manager, the select board, our officials on the Board of Health and so many other concerned citizens have continued to ask and recommend that all residents, save for those providing essential services, stay at home to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Our new way of living, practicing consent social distancing is more important now than ever. However, with the good weather upon us, some individuals continue to engage in group activities that put everyone at risk. These people are either not hearing or just not abiding by the state directive. Therefore, it is with great difficulty, frustration and sadness that the Board of Selectmen have ordered that all local parks and recreational areas be posted that they are closed to group activities. Our public work crews will be locking gates and posting signs at Elma Raymond, West Plymouth Recreational Facility, Forges Field, Hedges Pond Recreational Area, the Manaman Recreation Area, and Emerson Park. In addition, parking lots will be blocked at Briggs, Cleft Rock, Fresh Pond, Jenny Grismill, Morton Park, Nelson Memorial Park, Steve, Stevens Field, Siva Field, Center Hill Preserve, and Haskell Nook Road Park. There may be other public areas that follow. This message will be followed by a posting that includes all our public parks, recreational areas to which this applies. I understand how much frustration this will cause to our residents who have been observing social distancing and simply park in those lots so they may walk outside in the area. For that, I deeply and sincerely apologize. However, in an abundance of caution, this step is necessary. We have so many people on the front lines and we need to protect them. So please, please help us understand this is not forever but we need to flatten that line. And this is one way that we feel very strongly about that we can do it. Once again, I am impressed by what this community does, how people are, are taking to the tasks that are laid before them, how uncommon this is to us, but we're asking you to make one more sacrifice in order to save lives. Those on the front line, police, fire, DPW, medical personnel, um, people that are working in grocery stores and, and other essential businesses need to be protected. This is the least that we can do to them. And I ask deeply and sincerely for your help in, in making this come to be. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is Kenneth Tavares. He's the chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen. These updates are coming to you each day. We want to provide verified information from officials and experts in the community. And at this time, we're once again joined by Michael Jackman. He is a staff member with the Office of Congressman William Keating. Welcome, Mike. 
Thank you, Steve. And uh, thank you again for having me on. Thank you to PAC TV for hosting these daily forums. They've been a great source of information for me and for all of the congressman staff in terms of uh, finding out what, what's going on in the state and the town level and with a lot of local businesses and um, uh, other uh, uh, community members who were uh, working their way through this crisis. Um, again, I want to uh, reassure people that although our physical offices are closed, the services of the congressman's office are available online through our website, keating.house.gov and also by phone, uh, 508-746-9000. Please do reach out to us. If we don't answer, leave a message. We will get back to you. We're taking a lot of calls, but we are getting getting back to folks and um, trying to help them resolve their uh, situations. One item I wanted to mention, which uh, had not come up the last time I was on, uh, Congressman Keating is on the Foreign Affairs Committee in the House. And um, the last few weeks, our office has been working with the State Department on repatriating citizens who are abroad and were having difficulty uh, making their way back to the United States for, for various reasons related to the uh, COVID-19 outbreak. Um, some countries were not allowing planes to leave. Some countries were um, had lockdowns uh, so, uh, so people couldn't access the airports. And the State Department really has um, done all they could and, uh, and worked with the different um, uh, countries, uh, you know, overseas and trying to uh, help people get back to the United States. It really was a, a, a critical issue. I think the first few weeks of the outbreak, we've seen it drop off in um, the requests that we're getting um, in, in order, you know, from loved, people who have loved ones overseas. Um, the, the thing I would want to mention, if, if folks are still overseas and uh, having trouble getting back, definitely give us a call in the Plymouth office, go online to our website, request help. We do have a good contacts through the Foreign Affairs Committee to try to get information and try to connect people with the resources that are available. Uh, one thing you might want to, I don't think anyone's traveling overseas now, but uh, one thing you might want to bookmark for the future is uh, the, the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program through the State Department. It's a great way, if you are traveling overseas, to remain in contact with your government through the State Department and um, get information about uh, the countries and cities and regions you're traveling through. Um, the, the website for that is step, S-T-E-P, dot state, dot gov. And if you do have loved ones traveling overseas and they're having issues, they should check out that website and they should definitely be in touch with the consul or consulate or the embassy where they're, where they're staying. Uh, a few items which we mentioned before, just want to give updates. The unemployment, uh, what they're calling pandemic unemployment assistance for self-employed independent contractors, gig economy workers. It was authorized by Congress and signed into law as part of the Corona uh, Relief Act, the CARES Act, uh, almost two weeks ago now, or I guess it was over two weeks. Um, the State Department of Unemployment Assistance has received guidance now from the Federal Department of Labor on how to implement this program. I know the state is working to get this program up and running. We're in touch with them every day, trying to get some more guidance, uh, trying to get more information from them about how they're implementing the guidance. We are hopeful that uh, very soon folks will be able to enroll uh, and file a claim as a self-employed or an independent contractor and receive that special pandemic unemployment assistance that is available to them. Um, also, the CARES Act included an extra $600 for anyone who's filing for unemployment. And a special thing to note about that pandemic unemployment assistance is that it is retroactive to January 27th. So anytime you saw a drop off of business going back to that date, you would be eligible to make a claim. It'll be adjudicated like um, regular uh, unemployment claims are. Last thing I just want to mention, another little update, um, the SBA loan programs that were inst instituted by the CARES Act, the Payroll Protection Program. Um, we've been getting information. I know I mentioned it over the weekend. I think it's that more and more institutions of lending are uh, taking on the program and making applications available through their online uh, platforms. And also should note that the SBA has their own online portal that folks can go to 
small businesses who qualify can go to can find out more about the program and can find out more, uh, you know, uh, learn more about different lenders who are participating in the program. So if you go to sba.gov, there's a lot of information there. I also want to mention uh, there's a great uh, resource to the Massachusetts Small Business Development Centers. Uh, there's one in Fall River. I think it's the closest one to Plymouth, but of course they're online now too. You might want to check them out. They have uh, pretty much small business counselors who can work with you to help you through the process. So those are just some resources that are available and a few updates on some of the things we talked about before. So thank you, Steve. Thank you. That's Michael Jackman. He's a staff member for the office of Congressman William Keating. And once again today, we now welcome back our town clerk, Lawrence Pizer. And uh, Larry, since the last time you were here, we saw uh, yesterday that in Wisconsin they had a primary and it appeared as though there was not very much social distancing. And I'm wondering, what can you tell us about our upcoming election? Well, the first thing I can tell you about our upcoming election is that next Tuesday, the Board of Selectmen will be voting on postponing the town election from uh, the present date of uh, May 16th uh, to June 20th. And we'll see how June 20th works as we get closer. Um, we have no intention of exposing either voters or poll workers to the dangers that Wisconsin uh, did. Um, we were also going to be working with the, uh, the state Senate and the Secretary of the Commonwealth to see what we can do about the May 19th election, which is the uh, election for state Senate. Um, it's... Elections by their nature have a lot of people in the same place at the same time. I noticed that in Wisconsin, they, in, I believe in Milwaukee, they took 100 precincts and made five voting places. All that accomplished was putting more people in the same place. So we're certainly going to be working on that. There are some things um, that we still don't have complete control over as far as postponing is concerned, and that is the uh, construction of our ballot. Um, because I was able to get into town hall and work with the Central Voter Registry, which is the voter registration program, um, I do have a list now of candidates who have qualified uh, for Board of Selectmen. Uh, both of the incumbents whose terms are ending uh, Betty Cavaco and John Mahoney have successfully presented nomination positions. In addition, Frank Mand, Everett Malagudi, Alan Costello, Kevin Lynch, and Dickie Quintal um, have presented enough signatures to go on the ballot. Um, not that I'm suggesting this, but if anyone for any reason is interested in withdrawing, um, from that group, the deadline is next Tuesday. And since I will be in the office uh, for a little while on Friday and can actually work, not with anyone else, but work internally, if they're planning to withdraw, uh, they should call me before Friday. That would be a, a much better idea. Um, on the town's website, Plymouth-MA.gov, and under departments and under town clerk is the list of all of the people who qualified for the ballot. Been working at this for almost 28 years and this is completely different from anything else we've done. Uh, all of the rules um, had to be amended somewhat and I have some confidence that the list that we have is complete. So if if you go to the website and your name is not there, but you believe that you submitted a nomination petition, um, there are all sorts of possibilities as to where it is. We'll find it and we'll make sure that uh, it works. I should also mention that uh, we do have a race for school committee. Uh, the two incumbents, Michelle Badger and Robert Morgan, have qualified, and Jay Ferguson is also going to be on the ballot. None of the other uh, townwide positions have races. One other thing, um, maybe this is hope, 
hopefully a little bit uh, normal. Um, the town was able to purchase a printer. Um, I have it at my home. I have access to the uh, uh, state vitals records. And therefore, if you need a birth certificate or a marriage certificate or even a death certificate uh, to conduct your business in this time, um, go online, uh, go to the, the same town website under online purchases. Um, you'll then choose town clerk and vital records and make your order. Uh, you would not be surprised to know that with several weeks of not fulfilling orders, we have a long list to complete. But I do hope that I can complete the backlog either late this week or early next week. But if you're looking for something, that's the best way of ordering it. It's the easiest way for me to find it. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. That's Lawrence Pizer. He is the town clerk for the town of Plymouth. And each Wednesday now, we'll be hearing from our next participant. It is Heather Cosby, and she is a CPA in Plymouth. Welcome, Heather. Thank you, Steve, and thank you, PAC TV, for having me back again. Uh, my goal today is to try and just update the major programs as far as from what I see going on to hopefully continue to provide information to our citizens here. Um, basically, in a big nutshell, there's so much going on but the cash is not flowing yet. Um, programs have been written, programs are being implemented, uh, but the cash is from these programs hasn't, hasn't hit anybody's pockets yet. And I just wanna reassure everybody that that's, that is everybody's in the same boat, number one. Uh, number two, they're about to start flowing. So I thought I'd start with the uh, stimulus payments from the US Treasury, the individual payments, the $1,200 per person, $500 per child for a qualifying income. Those are uh, have not been distributed yet. They, my understanding is that they'll be coming out in waves. Uh, the first wave is the easiest to issue. People who have their banking information with the IRS, the IRS can calculate the amount quickly. Then, um, the, secondly, they'll be going down different, you know, Social Security recipients who don't have tax returns filed. They will get theirs, but it might be in a different wave. And then, uh, people who don't have banking information, the um, the president's uh, address had said that there would be a website that would be available. That website's not available as of today for people to update their banking information. So a, a whole nother way would be people that would receive checks. So just know that that is in process. Uh, there's no estimated date that I can find right now, uh, but once it starts flowing, it will, it will flow quickly. The second uh, area of information, which um, Mr. Jackman already talked about, was the um, unemployment benefits. So my understanding as of today is that the normal state benefits are flowing, but that the federal piece will be added in the following order. For people who are receiving state benefits as a normal benefit, not a part of the enhanced for um, self-employed individuals or subcontractors, the federal piece will be added on. And Governor Baker's address the other day said they expect that to happen very shortly. The, this, the other piece that involves people that would normally never qualify for benefits, which would be your self-employed and subcontractors, that piece will be uh, the third piece to start flowing. And he is again hopeful to get that done in the next week was my, his representation that I saw on the press conference. So uh, that information will start moving out. Keep checking the unemployment website uh, and start Make sure you get your applications in. Uh, I know that they've been ramping up staff and also doing training. The third piece of um, information or money source is the economic disaster loan and the $10,000 grants or payments that you could take in advance. This was the first loan that was available to businesses that they could apply for on the sba.gov website. It was a very short application. They indicated they'd be giving a $10,000 grant quickly. My understanding is that none of those grants have been actually provided out yet, but they are working to start issuing those in the next couple of days. And that I saw some information indicating they might be using a per employee cap to figure out how much to issue. But I expect more information to come and I would continue to check the sba.gov website for that information. Uh, the next area is what Mr. Jackman also talked about, which is the payroll protection program. It has only been 
a few days that banks have put together their programs to receive applications. And they're starting to receive the applications. They're following up with their clients to make them aware. My understanding is that the first preference is that you use the bank that you do your deposit, depositing with, your actual bank. They have the most information with you. They have a relationship with you and you'll want to seek them first. There's been a fair amount of confusion about what information you need. You're, basically, you need your 2019 payroll records. That, that's the biggest piece of information you need. Right now, the program's only open for what are called employers, people who actually have payroll. Um, you're gonna work with your bank. You're gonna get the application in. I have yet to hear anybody be funded uh, from that yet, but it, again, it's eminent. They have the, the um, resources in place and they're working towards that goal. The second piece of that is the part of the program available to self-employed, sole proprietors, subcontractors, people that would file a Schedule C on their personal return. My understanding is that regulation is coming for those types of taxpayers and that as of right now, the SBA would not be accepting those applications until April 10th. So if you're in that bucket, I don't have the information that you need to provide to the bank. Your best resource is going to be the bank uh, and your relationship there for them to provide you with what they need to make this happen for you. Um, the last area is really just personal liquidity. I wanted to just recap again, the relief available to you under the CARES Act for retirement. Number one, if you are retired and you're subject to having required distributions, but maybe you don't want to take them, you don't have to. So you have the ability to not take a required distribution this year, let that money stay invested and let that investment hopefully regain. The second piece of this is that if you are, you need access to money, but you're not of retirement age, you're not 59 and a half, you can have access to your retirement funds this year with no 10% penalty. You'll still pay income tax on it. There are some ways to maybe spread that income tax over a few years, but you can at least access that money if you need to. Uh, with that, I'd remind you, if you take money out of your retirement account and you return it within 60 days, you, you can essentially have that money uh, not be taxable because you're, you're taking a short-term loan. Um, but you can only do that once a year, once every 12 months. So there's a lot of ways to get liquidity. It's all coming. And I just wanted to update everybody uh, with where that's coming. I expect there to be more information in a week from now. Thank you. That's Heather Cosby. She is a Plymouth CPA. She'll be joining us each Wednesday. She'll also be here with all the other participants for our question and answer portion. You can send your questions to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. Also, each day we date stamp the video so that you will know when it is being live broadcast. And right now we're live broadcasting on April 8th. We began at noon and we're now gonna continue with the Executive Director for the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce, Amy Naples. Welcome, Amy. There we go. Hello, Steve. Thank you again for having me. Um, we know more than ever, businesses need important resources, tools, and opportunities. So our role at the Chamber has certainly shifted gears and we're adapting to the new normal. I wanted to let viewers know what the Chamber is doing to help our business community. We are embracing and developing new advertising tools, marketing campaigns, and events. We are strengthening and growing local, state, and regional relationships and gathering and sharing critical information as soon as that becomes available. We're educating ourselves in the area of small business loans, human resources, and virtual communications. We're working on recovery efforts and strengthening partnerships with local organizations so we can implement key strategies as quickly as possible. Steve. And most importantly, we have quickly adapted to the ever-changing mission and continuously keeping the business community in the forefront. You can stay up to date with all of our all we are working on by visiting PlymouthChamber.com and also sign up for our email list to receive constant communication from the Chamber. This coming Thursday, we are hosting a virtual happy hour event um, at 5 p.m. This is a BYOB and a lot of fun. I think everyone could use some fun right now, so please join us. In addition, on Friday morning at 10 a.m., we'll be having a webinar hosted by Beth Soboloff discussing the topic of how to make your business work from home. You do not have to be a member to join these events. Um, just visit the Plymouth Area Chamber's Facebook page for more info. 
And uh, as I mentioned on Monday's show, we have incredibly inspiring members of our community. And I wanted to highlight two again today. I'd like to recognize Brian Barry, owner of Texas Roadhouse. He has been serving at dinners to our local police officers, firefighters, and healthcare workers. He's committed to the community and it certainly shows. The second business I wanted to highlight was Craft Beer Cellar, who are putting together care packages for our local nurses. The care packages include a variety of goodies to help boost their morale. This kind of community support is what lifts us and sustains us during this difficult time. So I just wanted to thank everyone who is doing something inspiring in our community. And lastly, as we prepare for Easter Sunday, a little differently this year, I want to let you know the chamber has you covered. We've gathered all restaurants that will be offering takeout and their specials, as well as some ideas for Easter gifts. So you can visit the Chamber's Facebook page for the complete guide to help support local this Easter Sunday. And that is our business update for today. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Amy Naples, the Executive Director of Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. We're now going to our daily update on the state, and that is from Plymouth Representative Matthew Muratori. Welcome, Matt. Good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's start with our numbers uh, as of uh, noontime yesterday, April 7th. Um, so there were almost 7 million people in the Commonwealth, 81,344 have been tested to date. That's a little over 1% of the entire population. Um, and that's up from 5,000 tests from yesterday, which is a great sign. Uh, the initial goal was to try to do 3,500 tests a day. We're now exceeding 5,000 tests a day. So that's a really good sign that we're ramping up our testing. Of those uh, 81,000 plus that have been tested, 15,202 have been positive. And that's, uh, that's about 18.5% of the total that have been tested. And from that, um, uh, that's up by about uh, 1,300 cases from yesterday. Uh, and of those, a little more than 2% of, the, uh, of the, the tested cases are positive. Uh, 356 deaths have occurred. Now, that number jumped almost 100 people from yesterday, but that's only because of the weekend. It takes a couple of days to get the weekend numbers in. So that includes Saturday, Sunday, and Monday numbers as well. In Plymouth County, uh, we are at uh, 1,194 cases. And in the town of Plymouth, we are still at uh, 12, again, as of yesterday at noontime. Um, in those numbers, too, is the long-term care facility numbers. Of those 15,000 plus that have tested positive, almost 1,000 uh, from uh, are either residents or healthcare workers at our long-term care facilities in the Commonwealth. Uh, whether it's a nursing home, assisted living, or a rest home. So that's 958 of those, uh, and that's, uh, that's covering about 129 facilities out of the close to 700 facilities we have in the Commonwealth. Um, yesterday, the governor announced uh, $800 million of, of uh, infusion of cash for the health care providers. Uh, it's going to support hospitals, long-term care providers, primary care providers, and behavioral health programs. Uh, and providers. So that money is, is going to start rolling out to help these, uh, uh, these uh, health care providers who are desperately in need of, of cash to, uh, to continue with their operations. With regard to uh, nursing facilities, again, rest homes, uh, assisted livings, and nursing homes, in addition, yesterday the governor announced there'll be a, a, a family resource line that's going to be open seven days a week, nine to five, starting today. And that's for who has a family member um, in a long-term care setting, uh, that they have any questions that they, they um, or concerns that they may have, they can call this number again, seven days a week, nine to five, and that number is 617-660-5399. With regard to the uh, personal protective equipment, I um, want to give a great shout out to the, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, the the, and Amy can correct me, but it's the Halvis family, uh, Costas Halvis and his family um, through their um, Mass for Meds uh, Foundation uh, secured 53,000 masks that came in over the weekend um, from, I believe they came from China. And uh, as of yesterday has distributed uh, or is almost finished distributing all these 50,000 uh, masks around the um, uh, Boston area and the South Shore, including uh, folks here in, uh, in the town of Plymouth, the hospitals, the local Board of Health, the local fire department, police department, first responders, 
et cetera. So we really, a great deal of gratitude goes out to the family and the folks that actually help with that family in raising money. Uh, they raised over $30,000. They still have more to go on the GoFundMe page, um, but uh, kudos to them. And a lot of good is coming out of a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of negative things that are happening. So again, another example of an amazing community that we actually, uh, that we actually live in. Um, there are also announced yesterday there are new uh, grocery store guidelines that will go into effect as of as of tomorrow. Um, the, the grocery stores are going to be limited capacity of, of whatever their occupancy is to forty percent of their occupancy permit. Um, if you're if you're a grocery store that's less than twenty five people as occupancy, you're exempt from this. But uh, most of our stores are over the twenty five limit, so it'll be forty percent. Uh, they're also going to be required to put one way. Um, one-way um, um, uh, stickers on the ground to make sure people are going down the aisles more than one way. Um, they're gonna, uh, if folks want to offer a curbside pickup or delivery, they can do that as well. Um, and of course, the alternate hours for folks that are over 60 are still going to be in place as well. There is, um, There are ways that people can help. Um, if people want to help, they can donate to the... Uh, MA COVID-19 Relief Fund that we discussed yesterday. Um, that will be a fund that's established throughout the Commonwealth uh, to organizations that have need in the local communities, uh, and that will actually be able to distribute that those funds to where the needs are. So that's one way people can help. Um, if you want to volunteer as a healthcare worker or a first responder, that's another way to help. Um, they're also looking for new volunteers and employees for uh, folks that could do the community tracing collaborative that has been put in place by the governor and lieutenant governor. This tracing is going to be really important to find out um, the, the trace of the COVID virus and where it has been uh, and where it actually can travel. So it's important that we get a thousand uh, employee uh, people to actually volunteer or be hired for that. And of course, we also want to make our daily plea for giving blood, whether you can actually um, have a site that you can have a blood mobile or, or contact the Red Cross and go give blood. Um, uh, one of the um, pieces of information that came out today is the unemployment. Um, the unemployment rate, obviously it's going up. I think it's gonna be close to 10% um, as of this week in Massachusetts, uh, but it's alarming to see that by the end of June, it could be as high as 25%. And we haven't seen a 25% unemployment rate in this country uh, or in this state since uh, the early 1930s. So that's, uh, that's something staggering that we're gonna be looking at, but we will be dealing with. And once again, I wanna um, uh, thank all our first responders, our, our healthcare workers, um, those that work in daycare centers and uh, banks and grocery stores. Um, you are touching everyone's hearts by what you are doing out there. And we give you a great deal of gratitude and big cheers for what you're doing uh, and continue the good work to keep us all safe. So thank you, Steve. Thank you, that's Matthew Miratori. He is the Plymouth State Representative. Uh, we're gonna be doing our question and answers. We've received a number of questions. Email us at PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. And as our participants gather their thoughts, I'd like to tell you about tomorrow's lineup. We have a number of new guests who will be joining Ken, Matt, and me. And they include Henry Leip. He is the Emergency Management Director for the Town of Plymouth. Also, Adam Baylor, he's the Clerk Magistrate for the Plymouth District Court, Barry de Blasio, he is the Director of Community Services, and David Peck, he is the Chair of the Plymouth Building Committees. Once again, Michelle Brady will be joining us. She's the Director of Elder Services uh, for the Town of Plymouth, and Stephen Cole is the Executive Director for the Plymouth Regional Economic Foundation. And now we're gonna go to our questions. Our first question is for uh, Lawrence Pizer, our Town Clerk. And uh, Mr. Pizer, the question is, uh, the viewer says, I want to get married. I don't need a marriage certificate. I need a marriage license. How do I do it? Well, th those are two terms that are the same. Um, Plymouth is not issuing uh, marriage certificates at this time. There are other communities that are. Um, I think the nearest one is, is Kingston, but um, we... Our instructions are that uh, safety means that we can't be in the same place as the two people who are applying for the marriage certificate, and therefore we're not doing it. Try other communities. 
Thank you, Lawrence Pizer, Plymouth Town Clerk. And at this time, we're going to go to Heather Cosby. She is a Plymouth CPA. And Heather, the question is, I heard that the required minimum distribution does not have to be taken this year. Does that apply to everyone over 70 and a half years old? It, that is correct, but I do believe the law in December changed it to 72 years being the required minimum distribution age. My only question for myself is, is that if you weren't already subject to it, so if you were 71 last year, do you continue or do you get a break? But you would ask your financial institution if you're subject to the required minimum distribution. If you are, then you can take a waiver. You do not have to take it this year. And that's uh, Heather Cosby. Uh, next question to Representative Matthew Muratori, since we don't have someone uh, on directly related to uh, the Board of Health. The question, Matt, if you can answer. If not, we'll come back. Uh, where could a senior or anyone get, a, get tested for the coronavirus without a doctor's order? Is that possible? Uh, th that, is, that is not possible. Uh, but what you want to do, the state has set up a, um, a questions on health, and I would strongly recommend you go on that. You can actually talk to somebody. It's buoy.com backslash mass. It's B-U-O-Y.com backslash M-A-S-S. -S. You can go on there, and you can also talk to your, your health care provider. But that, that would be the only way if you get an order to actually get a test. With the hospital here in Plymouth, and we've been told that if you are experiencing any of the symptoms, please contact your primary care provider prior to visiting the health care facility again. If it's an emergency, call 911. If you want more information from the Mass Department of Health, Public Health, call 211. And the next question is for Kenneth Tavares, uh, Chair of the Board of Selectmen. And Ken, uh, the viewer has a number of questions, and I'll give them to you. Uh, when are the parks closing? Does it include the Jenny Grist Mill? And what happens when the lots near uh, the beaches, like the Nelson lots, and Memorial Hall are filled? Well, th this will take effect, what I announced today, it takes effect immediately, and it does include uh, the Jenny Grist Mill. And I'm sorry, the last question was uh, the lots? The lots filling. For, for Nelson and for Memorial Hall, what happens when they're filled? Well, at that point, you won't be you know, allowed in there, so... Uh, we are closing them off, uh, and I, I'm, again, I'm very sorry that this has to be, but uh, it's really for protection of the entire community. One other question, uh, part to that. As these lots fill and people walk to other trails like Forges Field, West Plymouth Recreation, Elma Raymond Field, will cars be parking on the street? What will happen? Any parking that uh, is illegal, and in a lot of these areas, there would be, you wouldn't be allowed to, you know, to, to park in certain areas, you're subject to ticketing. So if, if you can't find a legal spot to park in, then uh, you're going to have to move on. Thank you. Please send your questions to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. As we receive them, we're answering them live on air. We're going to go back to Plymouth Representative Matthew Muratori. Matt, a viewer asked if you would clarify the number of COVID cases in the town of Plymouth. Uh, the viewer heard 12, and the viewer believes that it's a larger number uh, for the town oh, of Plymouth. I'm sorry if I said that. It's actually there are 61 cases in the town of Plymouth. Thank you. And that's Representative uh, Matthew Muratori, uh, Plymouth State Representative. Each day, we also go back to all of our participants and ask them, now that you've heard each other giving your opening message, what would you like to leave your viewers with today as a closing message? We're going to begin with our first participant, Michael Jackson Jackman, and he is a staff member with the office of Congressman William Keating. Mike. Thank you, Steve. Um, you know, I'll just mention again um, the census. Uh, the census is going on now. The United States, uh, every decennial, I guess, every 10 years we do the census. It's, it's required by the Constitution. Um, it's very important that everyone fill out the census, get 
that information back to the census online, by phone, by mail. You know, I, I think it's important to point out um, 10 years ago in 2010, the, the population of Massachusetts actually increased by 4.4%. But despite that, we still lost a congressional seat. We went from 10 congressional districts down to nine. And the reason for that is because the population in southwestern states, uh, Texas, California, uh, increased by much higher amounts, much higher percentages. So those 435 uh, congressional districts that are, uh, are allocated you know, through the Constitution, designated by the Constitution, those are allocated based on the census. And because the population growth was so much bigger in other, other parts of the country, they got additional seats and we lost a seat. So that, that hurts the, the, the state. It hurts us. It hurts us with funding to um, a lot of grants, education grants, community development grants, community services grants, our formula-based grants. Uh, so we need to, uh, law enforcement grants too. We need to, public safety grants. We need to have everyone who is living in Plymouth, in Plymouth County, in Southeast of Massachusetts, in the, in the 9th Congressional District, we need everyone to be counted. Residents, everyone who's a resident. There is no citizenship requirement. There is no citizenship question on the uh, census this year, despite what you might have heard in the press over the last year or so. So it's very important. Get more information about that. You can go to my2020census.gov uh, to get more information about how you can file online. Obviously, we want to get as many people as possible filling out the census remotely, whether it's by mail, phone, or online so that we don't have to have people knocking door to door. Obviously, that's not, just not going to be possible at this time. So and if you have any questions about the census, feel free to give us a call. Again, our office number is 508-746-9000, and we're available for any questions about federal agencies um, that we talked about today or really anything. So feel free to give us a call. We'll do our best to resolve your question. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. That's Michael Jackman. He's a staff member with the office of Congressman William Keating. We're now going to go to our next guest, uh, Lawrence Pizer, Plymouth Town Clerk. Uh, Larry, what are your final thoughts? Well, to go uh, on with what Mike just said, uh, I've been in touch with the state coordinator for the census. Uh, Massachusetts response rate is ahead of the national response rate, and Plymouth's response rate is higher than the Massachusetts response rate but we're still under 50%. So uh, one of the groups that might need to uh, consider going to the website that Mike mentioned, anyone who has a post office box probably did not receive any mail for the census. So going to the website is a good idea. The, the original plan for the census was to send people door to door by now. Um, and obviously that's just a, not a good idea. So. Uh, again, what Mike said is true. If you can operate remotely, it's going to be best for all concerned. Also, um, the clerk's office is uh, willing and able to respond to uh, questions that the public has, uh, but they should understand that anything that's done in the collector's office, excise tax, real estate tax, uh, beach permits, any of those permits that you normally purchase at the collector's office, the best we'll be able to do if you write to the clerk is to send it to the collector's office. So happy to help, but um, choose, choose which office you need to deal with. Um, if you're looking for a certified copy, that we can help you with. Thank you. Thank you. Lawrence Pizer, Plymouth Town Clerk. We're now going to Heather Cosby. She's the Plymouth CPA. Heather, what takeaway message would you like to leave with our viewers today? I think I'd just like to address the small businesses and uh, acknowledge that you have a lot of information that you have to make very fast, smart decisions with. And small business are businesses under 500, which are most of the businesses in Plymouth. So what I want to tell you is if you're a business that you have, you, you can pay payroll between now and June 30. The payroll protection program is the best thing you can do for yourself. 
if you're a business that cannot be open, hairdressers, other people that you can't operate if you wanted to, then you're going to want to seek the unemployment income. If you seek loans that are not subject to the, the forgiveness um, regulations, then you really need to understand what you're doing with that debt and how you're going to repay it. Yes, you could have access to money, but if you can't get it forgiven, you're going to need to have a plan in place now of how you're going to pay that loan off. And I just wish everybody the best and keep working as hard as you can. Heather Cosby, Plymouth CPA, she'll be here each and every Wednesday on our forum. And on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll be joined by Amy Naples, Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Amy, your takeaway message for today. Sure, my advice is um, to our local business community, of course, you didn't come this far to only come this far. Hang in there. And the chamber is here for you, so please don't hesitate to reach out if I can be of any assistance at all. The chamber offices are closed, but we are certainly open for business. Visit PlymouthChamber.com or certainly email me directly at amy at PlymouthChamber.com. As always, I want to thank our essential employees working every day. I can't, you tell, I can't tell you how much myself, family, and my team appreciate all you are doing. And as always, please support sm small local business. That's Amy Naples. She's the Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Each day we conclude with a closing State of the State message from Representative Matthew Muratori. Matt? Thank you, Steve, and thank you to all our guests today. Really appreciate your efforts. Uh, first of all, want to uh, we all want to wish our, our Jewish faith friends a very uh, blessed uh, Passover, which begins uh, tonight. Uh, so uh, we wish them uh, a great Passover. Um, also, um, I'll close with my message of every day. Of course, we're very thankful to all the essential workers, as I said. Um, but there's three things you want to do. You want to first of all stay informed. Stay informed by going to mass.gov. COVID, I'm sorry, mass.gov backslash COVID-19. You want to ask questions, as Steve said earlier, by calling 211. Or if you want to get alerts uh, via text, go to COVID-MA to 888-777. And, uh, and as I said earlier, if you have healthcare questions, uh, please go to buoy.com backslash mass. You also want to stay home, as uh, Chairman Tavares has been saying, uh, we are in the surge uh, as we speak uh, over the next, you know, 10 to 14 days. So if you don't have to be out at all, do not go out. Um, if you do have to go out, um, be safe by wearing a mask. If you have to go to a grocery store or a pharmacy or a bank, uh, be safe. Um, but also, more importantly, stay calm. Um, enjoy the time that you have with loved ones. Um, it's, a, it's really a gift at this point, I think. Uh, for a lot of us that do have families to be able to spend the time that we can. And remember, the more we come together by staying apart, uh, the faster we'll get back to the people that we love and the things we love to do. So thank you again, Steve, and to PAC TV. Thank you. That is Representative Matthew Muratori. And now we're going to be closing with a closing statement from our Selectman Chair, Ken Tavares. But Ken, before we do that, we did receive another question for you. Uh, that initial announcement generated quite a bit of interest. And the viewer is asking, uh, she says, I live within walking distance of Hedges Field and Elma Raymond uh, Field, and I have a large dog. Can I walk with that dog if I walk there and don't drive my car? At yes. this time, yes. At this time, yes. Thank you. And uh, Ken, your closing statement. A couple of very quick uh, housekeeping items. Uh, on Monday, uh, we were informed that uh, the orange bags uh, that we use at the transfer station weren't available uh, in the Manaman area. A quick survey today uh, shows that they are available at Shaw's, Clements, and uh, Obashan, the uh, hardware store in, in the, uh, the, the center. Also, um, CVS has uh, the smaller bags, so they are available and the transfer station will be open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of this week. Also, uh, I want to remind uh, Plymouth residents that the Board of Selectmen will be meeting on Tuesday, April 14th at 1.30, and uh, that meeting will be uh, broadcast uh, due to the generosity of PAC-TV. And again, to, uh, to follow up 
uh, on uh, everyone else's comments. Uh, it was a difficult decision today to make the closings that we did, but we know that it's it, hopefully it, it is uh, short term that we've all got to do uh, uh, our piece to uh, make it safer for for others. Uh, it's an inconvenience. We understand that. But at the end of the day, we, if we prevent one more case of this virus uh, testing positive, it is well worth our efforts. And I want to thank everyone in the town for what they're doing. Sometimes we dwell on the, the negative parts, but there are so many uh, organizations, uh, businesses, and individuals that are doing so much quietly uh, every day uh, from the, uh, the board of Selectman's perspective. We know of stories of good deeds being done out there. Continue them and thank you to those that are doing it. It is very, very much appreciated. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, that's Kenneth Tavares, Chair of the Board of Selectmen. And each day he and Matt Muratori join me and we wanna to thank today's guests. They were Michael Jackman, who is a staff member at Congressman William Keating's office. Also town clerk, Lawrence Pizer. Heather Cosby, Plymouth CPA, Amy Naples, the Executive Director for the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. And tomorrow we have a full lineup. We'll be Ken, Matt, and I will be joined by Adam Baylor. He's the Clerk Magistrate for the Plymouth District Court, also Michelle Brady, and she is the Director of Elder Services. Stephen Cole, he is the Executive Director for the Plymouth Regional Economic Development Foundation, also Henry Leip and he is the Emergency Management Director. Barry de Blasio, he is Director of Community Resources, and David Peck, he's the Chair of the Building Committee. We're coming to you each day, Monday through Friday, at noon. We'd like to thank all of you for joining us, and uh, good day. Thank you.